How many goblins could a goblin gob if a goblin could gob goblins? Hey gang, using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, one word, all caps, will get you 10% off orders of $10 or more at Flipside Gaming, Original Magic Art, and orders of singles at Multizone. If they don't have what you're looking for, you could check out TCG Player and use my affiliate link to help support the channel. Looking for a way to bling out your deck and not spend a fortune? Alter Sleeves can help with that, and you can help with the channel at the same time by using my affiliate link. Or, if you're looking to join the Goblin Gang, you can always support me through Patreon. Today's game was filmed in New York City, and we're joined by the cardboard collecting siblings, Syriac and Clayton. Syriac is playing his Kalia deck, keeping a solemn simulacrum, two planes, Rakdos Signet, Knight's Whisper, Reaper of the Abyss, and Demonic Tutor. Clayton is playing his Rakdos deck, keeping Zansha, Arcane Signet, Swiftfoot Boots, Mox Diamond, Mountain, Rakdos Signet, and Smoldering Marsh. Trevor's husband Tom has also joined us again, playing Trevor's Fraley's deck. He keeps Pierce Whim, Court of Calling, Nykthos, Wasteland, Forest, Hall of Gemstones, and a Fauna Shaman. And the man behind the camera, Trevor, is playing Xenagos. He keeps Temple of Abandon, Tooth and Nail, Green Warden of Marasa, Rhythm of the Wild, Mountain, Cinderglade, and a Blightsteel Colossus. Clayton wins the die roll and starts us off. Clayton draws and plays a tap smoldering marsh, passing turn to his brother. Syriac plays a plains. Trevor plays a tap temple of abandon, scrying one, and then passes to Tom. Tom draws and plays a forest, passing. Clayton draws and plays a mountain. He taps out for a Rakto signet, passing. Syriac plays a plains, and like his brother, taps two for Rakto's signet before passing turn. Trevor plays a tap cinder glade, and passes to Tom. Tom plays a wasteland, and then taps two mana to cast a fauna shaman, and he passes to Clayton. Clayton draws for turn, and taps two for an arcane signet. He then uses the signet to activate his Rakto signet, using that mana to cast a Grim Monolith before passing turn. Syriac plays a Luxury Suite, which comes in untapped, and he has enough mana at this point for a Kalia, and once she resolves, passes to Trevor. Trevor plays a Taiga for turn, and then pays 3 mana for Rhythm of the Wilds, and passes. Tom's turn is quite quick as he plays a Forest, and passes with his mana open. Clayton draws, and he thinks about what to do. He casts Limdul's Hex in his main phase, which is a great enabler to let him cast Rakdos on his next turn. We then see Swiftfoot Boots hitting the field in preparation, and Clayton passes to his brother. Syriac plays a Mountain, and goes to combat like any Kalia deck should. He swings his commander at Clayton, gaining an on attack trigger, which lets him put out a Steel Hellkite. Uh oh! The flying figures then connect, and with the Hellkite's second ability, Syriac activates it, putting two into the X to take out nearly every card on Clayton's side of the board. Clayton floats three colorless with a Grim Monolith, as he should, and Syriac then moves to his second main phase, casting Knight's Whisper, losing two, drawing two, and then casts an Expedition map, and passes. Trevor draws, plays a Mountain, and passes. Tom draws, and drops Nykthos' land for turn. Four mana is tapped for Nylea, keen-eyed in his main phase, and he then passes to a deeply saddened Clayton. Clayton at least has drawn another land, and he plays a mountain for turn. He pays three mana for Zancha, who comes in, and he gives her away to Tom. He then passes. Syriac untaps and draws for turn. He goes to combat, swinging the Hellkite at Trevor, and Kalia the Vast at Tom. With the on-attack trigger from Kalia, he puts out a Reaper of the Abyss. Before moving to damage, Trevor then pays 3 to activate Zansha, drawing a card and having Tom lose 2. The creatures then connect, with Trevor losing 5, and Tom losing a further 8. Syriac plays an untapped Sacred Foundry, taking 2, and then pays 3 mana to activate the Hellkite again. This time, he only gets 1 permanent, blowing up Trevor's Rhythm of the Wild. We then see him using the Signet to help pay for a Demonic Tutor, and he goes to find a card from his library as he passes turn. 
Trevor untaps, and on his upkeep, Syriac casts Orm's Chant on Trevor to deny him the ability to cast spells this turn. This means Trevor's turn is very quick as he draws, plays a Ghost Quarter, and passes to Tom. Tom draws, and he casts a Piers Whim in his main phase. He picks everyone as foe, even Trevor, and names himself as a friend. This only punishes Syriac, really, and Tom grabs a forest as Syriac sacrifices the expedition map. We then see Tom move to combat, swinging Zancha at Syriac, and Tom passes. Clayton draws, and pays 3 into the X of an extended art Stone Coil Serpent. He's got nothing else, and has to pass. Syriac untaps, draws, and goes to combat. He swings the Hellkite at Tom, the Reaper at Clayton, and Kali at Trevor. With his Kali trigger, Syriac is able to put out Avacyn, Angel of Hope. And things are starting to get a bit dicey. Tom then takes 5, while Clayton takes 6, and Trevor takes 10, two of which is Commander. With the Hellkite having also dealt damage, Syriac pays 2 into the X ability to take out the Fauna Shaman on Tom's side. Syriac then taps 4 mana for Solemn Simulacrum, and goes to find what I'm hoping is a basic swamp from his library. He surprises me though, finding a mountain because he's a madman. He does play a Bloodstained Mire for turn, and then moves to his end step. This triggers the Reaper's Morbid trigger from seeing the Fauna Shaman die, and Syriac uses the trigger to take out Clayton's Serpent. At the end of turn, Trevor once more activates Sancha to draw a card and have Tom lose too. Trevor draws for turn and can actually cast spells. He plays a forest and brings out his commander, then passes, discarding down a 7. Tom draws and pays 5 mana for Ephraelis. He brings in the Planeswalker from the command zone and upticks her to make an Elf Druid token. We then move to combat, with Sancha headed at Syriac. He's able to block with an indestructible sad robot, and nothing comes of it, and Tom then passes. Clayton draws, and plays a Bloodstained Mire as well, sacrificing it immediately, and losing one to go and find a land. He settles on a Badlands, and we then see him taking two life to cast Gutshot instead of paying the mana for it, and deals one to his brother. Clayton then pays two black and two red to cast Rakdos, having met the casting criteria, and passes turn. Syriac plays a tap concealed courtyard as his land drop, and goes to combat. He goes at Tom with the Hellkite, the Reaper at Trevor, and Kalia also heads at Tom, with Avacyn going at Clayton. Syriac surprisingly has nothing to cheat out with Kalia's on attack trigger, and Tom takes 7, 2 of which is Commander, while Trevor takes 6, and Clayton takes 8. Syriac then pays 5 into the X to destroy Fraley's in his post combat main phase with the Hellkite and he then cracks the Bloodstained Mire, losing one to find a land. He grabs a Plateau, and then taps just enough to cast a Burnished Heart, and passes. Trevor untaps, and plays a Mountain. He taps Mana Lightning Fast to cast a non-entwined Tooth and Nail, picking the mode to put two creatures from hand into play. The first is a Blightsteel Colossus, and the second, Tyrant's Familiar. Moving to combat, I'll give you one guess as to where the Senegos trigger goes, and he swings the Blightsteel at Syriac. He doesn't let it go alone, swinging the Familiar as well. Sadly for Syriac, even with all the creatures he can block with, he'll still take 10 Infect and get taken out, so he blocks the Familiar with Avacyn to at least take that out. Tom draws and plays out a Soul of New Phyrexia, sadly having no land to play and passing. Clayton draws and goes to combat. Rakdos smashes into Trevor for 6, reducing the cost of all Clayton's creatures this turn by generic 6 colorless. We then see Clayton suspiciously counting up the card types he has in his yard, and he casts a further reduced costing Emrakul for literally only 2 mana. He targets Trevor with the on cast ability, taking Trevor's next turn, and giving Trevor an extra turn after that one. Clayton and Trevor team up for this first turn, and by team up I mean Clayton's in charge, and he draws. He pays 4 mana in Trevor's main phase to cast the newly drawn Perfect Answer of Greater Good. He then moves to combat, putting the Xenagos trigger on the Blightsteel, and swings it at Tom. Unfortunately, this is way more than enough infect damage, and Tom gets taken out. Moving to Trevor's second main phase, Clayton then sacrifices the Blightsteel to Greater Good, drawing 22 cards, and then discards 3. Clayton then plays a Wasteland, and activates it to destroy Trevor's Taiga and then activates the Ghost Quarter and targets the Taiga as well. He fails to find, 
and then pass his turn, discarding down to 7 for Trevor, and keeping only lands in his hand, and we move to Trevor's extra turn. Trevor untaps, and draws, and with a lot on the line, he plays a forest, and then taps out for his newly drawn Phyrexian Hydra, and Trevor moves to combat. He gets a Xenagos trigger, pumping the Hydra by plus 7 plus 7, and swings it at Clayton. Clayton has no choice but to block with Emrakul, and the Hydra then gets 13 minus 1 minus 1 counters put onto it, meaning it'll die at the end of turn once the pump wears off, and Trevor then passes to Clayton. Clayton draws, and goes to combat. He hits Trevor for another 6 with Rakdos, and in his second main phase, plays a Graven Karens, and passes. Trevor untaps, and draws, playing a mountain. 6 mana gets him an Inferno Titan, who comes in and deals 3 damage to Clayton. Trevor then puts the Xenagos trigger onto the Inferno Titan, pumping it, and swinging it at Clayton. This triggers the Inferno Titan on attack trigger, dealing 3, and then connecting for 12. Clayton knows when he's beat, and extends the hand. Game review time. So, I think everyone got to do something pretty cool in this game, with the exception of Tom. I think this game was filmed after he trounced the table with the Elves deck, so I think he probably kept a less aggressive hand. Syriac reminded me why Callie was terrifying when she first came out, and the hits just kept coming. I do think the early Orms chant might have been a mistake, but it's hard to say because I really don't play with a lot of silence-based cards, so I'm probably not the best to comment too much on this. His brother Clayton seemed like he had a really great start, which was immediately shut down by that Steel Hellkite, and it was fantastic to see Clayton claw his way back into the game with such a powerful effect like Emrakul, The Promised End. I know a lot of people have problems with having their turn taken, but honestly, I think it's a fair effect, and, as you saw, Emrakul does give that player another turn after the one that was stolen from them. I think in 9 out of 10 cases though, typically the player who took your turn before you does as much as they can to mess with you, and Clayton did that by leaving Trevor with only lands in his hand. He got super lucky with that Phyrexian Hydra, followed by the Inferno Titan, and holy cow did Inferno Titan impress me. Seeing as I usually only play Sun Titan, it was refreshing to see a new Titan hitting the field, and the Inferno Titan swung for 18 points of damage in one turn, which was incredible. I now entirely understand why this is in the Xenagos deck, and the upside of this card is huge with the fire breathing effect built into it, not to mention the 6 damage that can be spread anywhere to clear out blockers or just go right to the face. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.